We did not train to be merciful here. Mercy is for the weak. Here, in the streets, in competition, a man confronts you, he is the enemy. Let's review Cobra Kai, season three. Yeah! What is up, guys? Cobra Kai season three debuts on Netflix this Friday. I'm here right now to give you guys a spoiler free review. My quick thoughts on this season. I literally just binge watched all eight episodes of season three. I have a lot of Cobra Kai in me right now and I need to get it out. Okay. I probably will do a spoiler review uh, after it uh, releases this Friday sometime down the line. Uh, and maybe maybe review some of those Karate Kid movies that are behind me. We'll see. I am a massive Karate Kid fan, as many of you are. I grew up with the franchise. Uh, I saw most of them in the theater when they came out, uh, except for maybe the first. I think I was like 10 years old, 11 years old when the first one came out. I don't remember. Maybe I saw it in the theater. I don't know. But I have a big soft spot for the franchise, especially the first two movies. I probably like the second movie just as much as the first movie. Now, I have watched season one and season two. I did not review those, but uh, I thought, why not go ahead and review season three since I have early access to it, right? And I love the show so much. And I will say this right now, Cobra Kai is easily the most bingeable TV show ever created. I've literally watched seasons one and season two multiple times. It's just that type of show. Season three, I'm gonna let you know right now, no different extremely bingeable okay is it the best of the three seasons no i don't think so but still a lot of great nostalgic cheesy even fan servicey moments throughout but it's good fan service that's kind of what makes cobra kai work is because it's not afraid to reach back to the early karate kid movies and pull some of that lore out and up front the kids the new characters in this television show as far as season three goes they're good but to me the adults the characters that we already know and love are the best part of season three by far obviously the end of season two was freaking bonkers crazy you had this all-out karate fight in the high school uh and it was very satisfying it was it was crazy you could tell that the filmmakers really went for broke this is pure cheese entertainment they know that they know what they're giving you you know what you're getting and that's exactly what this show is and season two delivered that in a big fat juicy big mac cheeseburger and so obviously in this season miguel is kind of a focal point because he is paralyzed and so there's a lot of questions looming like how uh long can they go with this character to make him 100 percent again you know and is it realistic? That's another big question too. If you are pretty much paralyzed, yeah, you're gonna get a surgery to try to fix that. But still, what are you gonna be dealing with after all that, you know? And is it gonna be realistic? Because if it's not, then you're gonna poke holes in it. And I'm poking holes in it right now. And honestly, just getting this out of the way, the cons out of the way, because there's few cons. Like I said, it's still really fun. But the big thing for me was I wasn't really buying Miguel's uh, part in this season his, his journey a character that is in the shape that he's in is not going to be getting in a knockdown drag out brawl anytime soon and so every time he was in a situation like this i i was literally like grabbing my back like oh my god how, how can they how can he do this this is crazy and also it, it wasn't believable for me for these other kids to put him in that situation i don't care if you're the biggest enemy of the of miguel you're not going to fight a guy who was just paralyzed, you know? It traumatized this school. So that right away is my biggest problem with this season. But there's a lot to love about this season. First off, Daniel. If you remember, in the last two seasons, it was kind of jarring how much of an a-hole Daniel was sometimes. It didn't feel like the Daniel that we know and love from the first two movies. I think it was realistic because this is over 30 years later. Is it possible that this character is going to be different 30 years later? Absolutely. I would wager that I'm probably different than I was 30 years ago. It's very believable. But uh, the Karate Kid fan in me was probably the most happy this season because Daniel is pretty much what he was in the first two movies. You know, over the last two seasons, he's learned a lot as a character. Uh, he's got his own family now. Uh, a lot of the struggles that his daughter has went through has kind of forced him to grow. Uh, his dealings with Johnny, all that good stuff. So I was really kind of just gushing 
at Daniel throughout this whole season. I loved him, actually. I thought he had a lot of bright, shining moments. A lot of moments where you're going to get chill bumps, for sure, especially uh, in the final episode. Yeah, Daniel fans, you're going to be happy. Johnny, not too much to say about the character. Has he grown that much this season? A eh, little bit. You know, not like Daniel, you know, and I found myself actually liking Daniel as a character more than I was Johnny. And that wasn't the case the first season, especially the first season. I, we all loved Johnny the first season. This was so cool to finally see this guy get redemption. This season, his relationship with his son is the biggest problem without going into any spoilers. I will get into that in the spoiler review. But because of the way he dealt with his son, Robbie, um, I didn't like Robbie that much. And it's not fully Robbie's fault because, you know, the son learns from the father. And so when Robbie wasn't on screen in this season, I didn't really care as much. Now, one character that does have a lot of growth this season, I think, is Sam, uh, Daniel's daughter. Because she is really conflicted about what happened in the last season, the, the last episode with the big brawl. And she's dealing with, you know, regaining her focus and, and dealing with fear. And there's this great scene in one of the earlier episodes where her and Daniel, they just have this father-daughter talk. And it's kind of beautiful. And he talks about when he was dealing with the same situation in Karate Kid Part 3. And, he, you know, how Miyagi taught him how to deal with that fear. Because we all have those moments in our lives where we're struck with something that, be, to be honest, petrifies us, scares us. How do we rise up again and get out of this situation, you know, and regain our focus? That's one of the things that works so well about this show. As cheesy as it is and as funny as it is sometimes, there's a lot of heart there and a lot of emotion. And it's great in terms of like dealing with bullying and rising up and finding oneself because life is hard. Okay, and Cobra Kai makes life a little bit easier with all those lessons. Now, one thing I have to talk about is the Japan section. If you've seen the trailer, you know that Daniel does go back to Japan. The Karate Kid Part 2 fan in me was loving every second of this section. There's a couple of episodes that deal with Japan. And I won't go into any details about the characters that Daniel reconnects with, but you can probably guess. I was actually quite surprised with one of them. Uh, you know, there's a lesson there, and one thing we always like, even in the Karate Kid movies, is when Daniel learns uh, a new style of fighting, and you might see a little bit of that in these episodes. And usually when he learns something new, it comes back around later. Now, another thing that I loved about this season was the dealing of Kreese. Uh, you know, Kreese showed up, I think, for the first time in season two since the movies. And I've always been interested in Kreese as a character because he is a very intelligent guy. There's a few um, moments in the episodes where, he, you know, you see that. He knows how to deal with children because their minds are so easily manipulated because they're young. And he teaches them about not showing mercy. But in this season, he goes even further with it. And the kids are even more aggressive. But he's very intelligent. The guy knows how to deflect any attention away from him onto somebody else, you know. If, if he's accused of something, he'll say, yeah, but what you did was just as bad, if not worse. A lot of that in this season, too. Why is Kreese the way he is? Where did he get this show-no-mercy attitude from? It all comes from a place. And you can imagine somebody that served in Vietnam and being put in the situations that they are put in, it might create a dangerous person. And that's what it does with Kreese. And I just ate up every one of those uh, scenes in this season. Kreese is probably my favorite character this season besides Daniel, actually. Now, in closing, the final episode, I think, is great, okay? There's a little bit of repetitiveness in terms of the younger cast, um, in terms of the story. I wanted something a little bit different, I guess, but they make up for it in the way they deal with uh, the adults, uh, with Johnny, Daniel, and crease. So overall, guys, uh, I'm going to give this season a purchase worthy. It, it was very satisfying in moments. Yes, it does have its problems, but you're not going to have any problem getting through this. I mean, you're going to burn right through these episodes and still have a blast with it. So uh, I enjoyed it. 
So anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think of this season. I look for my spoiler review coming in the future. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays. We do Free Fire Fridays. Follow me at Dum Dums on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And Cobra Cat.